We're talking about the risk of stroke after AF ablation. What do we see 10 years out from ablation for atrial fibrillation? The paper has been nominated for a Young Investigator Award here at the European Society of Cardiology. And I am with uh, Dr. Denise Karasoy, uh, MD, research fellow, working on a PhD, uh, Copenhagen University Hospital Gentoft in Hellerup, Denmark. Okay, let's take a look first at why did you do this study? What were you looking for or what, what prompted you to say, I want to do this? Well, um, radio frequency ablation has been increasingly used to treat patients with atrial fibrillation, especially over the past decade. And the risk of stroke is an important issue when it comes to patients with atrial fibrillation, but very little is known about the risk of stroke after radio frequency ablation. The idea is that it could be easily that the risk of stroke is much lower compared to a patient without an ablation. So it was quite an interesting subject to study. Now, there's a blanking period after the surgery is done, the RF ablation. So you're looking at after that period? Yes, I do. Um, the three months blanking period, period uh, is the period where most of the patients receive oral anticoagulation due to a high risk of stroke. What I focused was, and what I questioned was, whether or not oral anticoagulation therapy was effective and the risk-benefit ratio of oral anticoagulation therapy beyond the three months of blanking period, in addition to studying the risk of stroke on long term. So what did you find after going through all of the data? I found that the risk of stroke beyond the three months of blanking period is very low even in high-risk patients determined by the currently used uh, stratification schemes such as CHATS and chats vasc And the other uh, finding was that the risk-benefit ratio of oral anticoagulation therapy was not as expected because we want to uh, see that a patient receiving oral anticoagulation therapy has a uh, reduced risk of stroke, while we know that all anticoagulation therapy also is associated with increased risk of bleeding. But in patients treated with radiofrequency ablation, what we see is that the risk of bleeding outweighs the benefit of preventing stroke. Now, in this particular study, what was the number of patients you were looking at? I have identified 4,050 patients from a nationwide databases of Denmark. So this is a large group of people. This actually does tell us something significant clinically. Sure, it does. I mean, there's been some real concern as to whether, you know, patients after RF ablation, how long they need to uh, stay on anticoagulation. As far as you're concerned, based on this data, the blanking period is fine after that. Well, um, I will not treat my patients beyond the blanking period with anticoagulation. I would not. So with RF ablation, it really is more of a permanent fix for these particular patients? I would say that. Okay. For uh, CardioSource World News, we have a variety of uh, Young Investigator Award nominees that we've talked to at this meeting. There's uh, some really good papers that are being presented at ESC. We have a lot of them up online. We have more of them that are going to be appearing in CardioSource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.